We are going to be creating another model class or entity, and it's going to be called genre. The genre class is going to be connected to our movie class. So we are going to code a relationship as well. Uh, but first, we are going to go ahead and code up genre. It's super short. So I believe you guys can key the code in. It's not going to take you very long. So I'm right uh, clicking on models. I'm going to add a class and I'm going to call it genre. And then I'm going to take a look in the book and enter the code for my genre class. So I've got public class genre. There's two properties in this. Uh, the first one is actually a string. And it's genre ID. And the second one is also a string. And the property is called name. That's it. <laughs> We've got two. Uh, and using the conventions, uh, you know that genre ID is going to be the primary key. However, because we have a return data type of string, it is not going to be an identity column. So the values will not be auto generated. So, at this point, we've got a genre class, which is going to become a table, and we have a movie class, which is a table, and they are not connected. So to connect them, uh, we are going to put the genre ID into the movie table. So when you're connecting tables, the absolute best way to do it is to take the primary key from one table, add it to the related table, and it becomes a foreign key. And this relationship then would be one genre can be in multiple movies. And that makes total sense. So we are going to add this after rating. And so obviously this is going to be required because if we don't make it required, how are we going to connect it to the genre table? And so the error message that we are going to display is please enter a genre. And we said this was a string. So when you are putting the foreign key in to the related table, super important that the data types are the same. Now for the next line. This is one of the ways that Entity Framework is going to know that genre ID is a foreign key. A uh, couple conventions that are in play. When it sees a class name followed by an ID, and it's not the current class, it is going to assume that you have a, a foreign key. And the next statement actually verifies that we have a foreign key because the data type is the class and the property is also the class. 
So those two statements together are basically indicating that we have a foreign key. And when we do the migration, you will see that it does indeed make a genre ID a foreign key. Now this is probably a little simpler uh, than the old process. Okay, so this has actually been greatly improved and they've made this easier. And because you guys are eventually going to be doing this, I just want to show you another example. So I have a blog class and a post class. And so I've got an ID here. And I have now added that to my post class. And just these two statements indicate a foreign key. So that's just another example for you to look at. Now, before we actually do any kind of uh, migration, we do need to uh, basically update our movie context, right? Because now we have a, another class that needs to be converted over into a table. So let's open up our movie context. And right below our DB set, we need to add another one. And so this one is for our genre class. And the name of the table is going to be genres. And then the next time we do migrations, it is going to generate that table. Now, in addition, uh, we want to seed genres with some data. And because genres is the primary key table in the relationship between genres and movies, genre has the primary key, movies has the foreign key. We have to put the data into genres first. Okay, It has to exist in genres before we add it to movies. So that means that we are going to need to add uh, another model builder dot entity statement uh, indicating that we have data. So we're going to kind of take a look at the book and enter the data that they have displayed. And so we have model builder object. And we're indicating that this is our genre table. And we have data. Oops, meant to put a semicolon there. <clears throat> And we'll key in new genre. And we're going to set the genre ID, which is the primary key for this first one, equal to A. And the name is action. And then I'm going to take this line and we're just going to copy and paste. I think that's enough. And then we've got CC. And 
the H. Oops, we need one more. M. So I'm going to paste right in here. R and S. And then we'll just change the name. So we've got sci-fi. For S, we got rom-com for R. Musical. Horror. Drama for D and comedy for C. And now that we've got the C data for genre, we need to edit our three movies down here and add genre ID. And then for the first one, it is a D. And for the second one, it's an A. And our third one is an R. Oops, forgot my comma. All right, so at this point, that looks pretty good. And what we're going to do is save and run a build just to make sure we don't have any errors. Because we've added our genre class, we've related it uh, in to movie by adding a foreign key, and we've modified our context. So uh, we are ready to add a migration. We don't need to change startup, and we do not need to change app settings. So it's pretty easy to add more models, develop relationships, and modify the seed data. So for the migrations, Again, we need to go into the Package Manager Council. So if you don't have yours docked like me, uh, go into Tools, go into NuGet Package Manager, and select the Package Manager Council. So the process for migrations is pretty much the same as before. We have to add a migration and give it a name. And usually the name is representative of what you're doing. Uh, and then we update the database. So we are going to add migration, and we're going to call this one genre, because those are all the changes that we made. And right now it is creating that date and time stamp followed by genre. You can see that it created it here, and it opened it for us. So in our up method, you can kind of take a look. Uh, you can see that it added the genre ID column to movies, and it created the genre table. And then you can also see that we've got all of the seed data. Uh, in addition, if you look down here, you can see that it added uh, the foreign key constraint for uh, genre ID. Uh, then in the down method, uh, there's a little more going on now, uh, because if you remember, you cannot uh, drop a, a table if it's related. So the first thing it's going to do is remove that foreign key constraint. Then it's going to drop genres. And uh, then it is going to, looks like it created an index. So it's going to have to remove an index. And then it's going to 
uh, remove movies. Okay, so a little more going on in the down because now we have a related table. And then you'll notice that we still have the genre uh, or the designer file, and it has updated uh, the snapshot. So I'm going to do the update database command. Interesting. So I'm actually glad this happened. So it is having an issue with my foreign key constraint. This actually happened before. So sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't. And honestly, I have not done anything different with my code. Movie list models, movie list models. I should not have to add the entity framework core. Yeah, I should not have to add that. Let me save and run a build. And I'm going to try update database again. Hmm. Interesting. So there's an issue with the foreign key constraint. All right, so one workaround for this is to delete the migrations and do them again, and it will work. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then uh, I do have an issue now because I have this movie exercise table created. I cannot delete it because I have the project open. So I'm going to change the name. And so I need to go back over here and I need to go into app settings. Here's where I named it. And I'll just change it to movies DB for database. So with the change in the database, uh, it when I do the migrations, it's actually going to create this new database. And this did happen to me before, and this was the fix. So here we go. We're going to add a migration. We'll call it initial. Okay, so now uh, because I got rid of my old migration, initial is pretty busy <laughs> because it's creating two tables now. Okay, and so then we've got our insert data for both of the tables, and then down here we have the drops. Uh, now that I've got that, I am going to go ahead and update the database.
And I'm fairly certain it's going to work because I have had this happen before. I would say about 50% of the time. So that worked fine. Uh, so I go over here and I'm gonna to have to refresh. And here is my new one. So I'm gonna get rid of the old one. And let's take a look at the new one. So here I've got genres. And you can see that's the primary key, all looks good. And here I've got movie ID, primary key, genre is the foreign key. So that worked fine. And I would say about 50% of the time this happens. So if it happens to you, now you know how to fix it. And if it doesn't happen, awesome. Uh, your migrations will have more files than mine. Okay, so I've only got the three. Um, if you were able to do the update and it worked, uh, then you will have a couple more files in here.